We'll start off here with the Utah State Aggies. And Utah State, of course, Blake Anderson's team, uh, hell of a year last year in his first season. Yep. Went 11-3, and three, went 6-2 and two in the conference. Um, won the Mountain West. I mean, just destroyed yes. San Diego State in the conference title game. Uh, their post-game win expectancy. This is a new one I'm going to bring up on each of these teams that kind of gives you an idea of how deserving the teams were, et cetera, of those wins. Uh, 8.28 and 4.72. So the post-game win expectancy for them last year says that they really should have been about an 8-5 and five team. Uh, but they went 11-3, and three, and they, they certainly improved towards the end of the year. The first, like, five games of the season, uh, it, or seven games, I guess they opened up five and two, but they got three wins, like, just by the, the skin of their teeth. I mean, it was really, really close. Probably shouldn't have beaten Air Force. Probably shouldn't have beaten Colorado State. I mean, it was stuff at the end of the game that really came down to it, and the stats just didn't look right. They, they got a lot of lucky bounces last year. But they ended up really improving throughout the season, and you could see it. They destroyed San Diego State in that Mountain West title game, and then they beat Oregon State in the Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl. So this was a good team last year. This is going to be a fun season to see exactly what Blake Anderson has there. Uh, We'll start off with the offense. Bonner completed 61.3% of his passes. The offense was number 25 in third down conversions. They were number one in the country in 30-plus yard plays. So they were... Uh, I'm not going to say boom or bust, but they certainly took a lot of chances and they capitalized on them. Uh, They're returning five offensive linemen that have 500-plus snaps. The question here is, can those offensive linemen get any kind of a push to help the rushing success rate with returning starting running back Tyler? Um, Calvin Tyler is the running back, by the way. Uh, They were number 124 in the country. Every other offensive statistic that you could find was really, really good. Their rushing success rate was number six from the bottom last year. So if they can get any kind of consistency there, it's certainly going to help them out when they play. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's that's Mike Anderson's offense. Hey, it is boomer bust. He takes the top off the defense, and if you miss and if your defensive back doesn't make the right play, he is going to score. Okay? True. And when he does that, that means he scores fast and they're not running the damn football. Like, this is the way that they play offense. Like, if they ran the ball really well, then this wouldn't be a Blake Anderson offense. Uh, okay, you do have a value. So they're not there. gonna they're not gonna get better at running the football because they don't do that. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's uh let's talk about the defense. If you, without looking at numbers, last year, uh, would you have considered their defense pretty good? Uh, I would have said at the beginning of the year no, and I think they got considerably better at the end of the year, but I don't know any metrics. I'm just gauging on liking Blake Anderson, watching this team more than most Mountain West teams. They were not very good at uh, passing success rate, but they were pretty good at rushing success rate. They were number 42 in the country in defensive PPA per drive. That's defensive uh, predicted points added per drive, which is really good for a Mountain West that's team. Real, that's, that's really good for a, yes. for a Mountain West team, yeah. So they, Especially they a team the size of Utah State. No, you got that right. They uh, they lost some studs, but they did bring in some really talented transfers uh, that could end up making the unit even better in 2022. Defense was number 31 in Havoc rate last year, number 10 in stuff rate. So that defensive line was serious. Uh, you got to wonder, can they continue that trajectory without their defensive end, Henninger, and the linebacker, Rice? Uh, their defensive end, uh, Byron Vaughns, is, he is the key here. Like, I think he's going to be insanely disruptive. He had a a personal havoc rate of like 5%, which is kind of absurd. Like he's he's unbelievable. So I would I would imagine this team could be really, really good. Uh, they do have a linebacker back, AJ, and I'm not even going to try and say his last name, uh, but his numbers were great last year. So they, they got some good dudes coming in that I think are going to be awesome here. Um, big losses, though. Their top three wide receivers are gone. Um, and, you know, you lose that the defensive end and the linebacker. They lose uh, the safety, Shaq Bond. They lose their tight end, Carson Terrell. Um, keys to the season here, I've got, can the team go 4-0 in one-score games again? Now, it, the post-game win expected, no. su- they suggested three fewer wins, but obviously they played better at the <laughs> end. Um, I don't think you can do 4-0 in one-score games again. Uh, they'll yeah, need to reestablish those playmakers. Like I said, they lost their top three wide receivers. 
But they did bring in Cobbs, a wide receiver from Maryland, and uh, Xavier Williams from Alabama. And those guys could pop. They are really, really talented guys. I've got this team sitting at like 8-4 and four this year, and I think it would be really good, uh, you know, to, to keep them around that. That's exactly number. what I've got, 8-4. and four. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. Uh, eight and four. Like I, I had a feeling you would you would think highly of this team as well. But you know, when you look at the schedule, they play at Boise, they play at Alabama. Uh, I've got them losing at BYU, and then I've got them losing at home to Air Force. At, you know, I've, I think they could probably beat Air Force. They just did it last year. So is nine or ten wins out of the question here? I don't think so. But you know, when you got those three on the road, BYU, Boise, and Alabama. Uh, you know, anything more than nine wins it might be a little much. And eight wins seems, you know, just about right. Just about right with what with what else is happening across the uh, the conference. You uh, you feel pretty strong about that one? Yep. Eight, eight, eight and four is really, really, really good season. That is basically assuming they have one conference loss. Yes. Yes. So, well, two. Uh, two, I'm sorry, yeah. I, I kind of always take Boise out of everything. Yeah. So <laughs> they seem like an I, I think so. Yeah. I know it sounds shitty because there's no reason this team can't compete with Boise. Agreed. Agreed. I'm 100% with you. I am 100% with you. I think that this team, um, I mean, Utah State could certainly challenge for the division again. Like, I don't, sure. I don't think that there's anything crazy. Like, they could win the conference again. They got low. The quarterback is back and. They got talented transfers in. So long as everything cooks together, like I don't see any reason why they wouldn't be able to do that. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.